Let's talk about the icing chemicals. This became my evil nemesis. Sodium chloride, rock salt, least expensive, most commonly used. Calcium chloride, common pellets or flakes. Magnesium chloride, it's the most expensive, it's marketed as the safest, it's dog friendly, you, know, you name it, there's pictures of people on the front holding their animals, loving you know, magnesium chloride. Um, they're blended products. There's a, a product that I used that had sodium, magnesium, calcium, and potassium in it. I mean, this stuff is just deadly. It works beautiful. Uh, and liquid salt brines. Most of the liquid brines have 22.5% salt solution. So after I went through my first summer of hell, after my winter of hell, everyone's calling me saying, what happened to our pavements? I went to our board. Our board said, just forget about this stuff. You know, I, this stuff is bad. And I said, to me, I have to understand what went on here. I've got people that I looked in the face and I told them, this stuff is great. And I spent seven years of my life promoting this stuff. What are we going to do? So I decided I was going to do something. This is at my home. I put, poured pervious concrete, divided it up into six different sections. Uh, first section was going to be left alone. No chemicals at all. The second was sodium chloride. Third, calcium chloride. Fourth was that wonderful blended product that had all four terrific melting products. And the last one was liquid salt brine. So I spent last winter going out, created a log of applications, times, dates, temperatures, so I got minus 17 degrees down there. That was my record. And it was the coldest day. And I'm out there every you know, couple days. Anytime we had measurable snow or ice, I went out and I put chemicals on. Somebody's got to find out what the heck went on here, right? Can't walk away from it. My phone keeps ringing. So we went in the spring and I rented a core drill and I core drilled all these areas. So I could send them off to have testing done. Started out in November, this absolute pristine, perfect, pervious concrete. Now, let me say real quick, when you go out onto a project and there's a failure, first thing, there's four or five different things that come up. Well, maybe the guy installing didn't know what he was doing. And then maybe the concrete mix really wasn't that good and they didn't know what they were doing. And then maybe it was dirty and was never maintained and that's what caused it, the water wouldn't infiltrate. I wanted to take all these out of the mix. I wanted good pervious concrete. I wanted the mix to be right. I wanted it to be installed right and I wanted it to be clean. So we took all those factors out and now I've got the perfect you know, analogy to use for the icing chemicals. And started out with this perfect situation and ended up with that on the end. So when you look at the pad number one, that I put no de-icing chemicals on it. I didn't even shovel it off. I just let the snow pile up you know, all through the winter on, on pad number one. And when you look at that one down there, and you can see all the discolorated areas, it's all falling apart there now. You know, this was in May. What happens, what we're learning now, I mean, I'm not a smart guy. Why am I the one who's doing this? Aren't there like really smart people out there who could just eat this stuff up? But no one wanted to do anything about it <coughs> until I screamed and I said, hey, you know, this is an issue. I've got my life wrapped up into this stupid stuff. It's falling apart and no one knows why and no one wants to tell me anything. So I started this study. I've got universities all over the United States contacting me, wanting my information and working on this stuff now. Uh, first they thought it was free saw. Everyone says free saw. It had to be free saw, right? No, it's chemicals. There's no free saw damage on this thing, is there? This one's falling apart. It's chemical damage. And different chemicals are doing different things. Um, the, the calcium chloride actually creates a, 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 a byproduct when it reacts and seals the surface off. 
there'll be a white coating all over the surface. The water doesn't go through. So we're trying to find out what's causing these problems. Um, the ready mix concrete foundation, research foundation, is, is giving money to Washington State University. Dr. Lee Hasselbach is, is doing a study now and, and looking at my information and doing a study on, on the icy chemicals. Talk about a couple projects before I turn the, the presentation over. Um, beautiful project, Alcasan. Any Alcasan people here? Beautiful project. Uh, hands down, one of my favorite projects. Everything here was done right. There's a strip of standard concrete running through the center. There's the porous concrete. There's a great installation. It was a great design. But well, what the heck's going on? It's falling apart. Now, how could all this stuff be so good? Everyone did their jobs. And that's the thing I can't stress enough. We all did our jobs right. But the parameters changed. Now we have winners. Now we have the issues. They salted the icing chemicals, not sure which one, down through that center strip. They didn't put it on the porous area. You can see that out here there's nothing wrong. But what happened is as the chemicals turned to a liquid brine, they ran off the surface and they ran over into that crack there and caused the issue. No one did anything wrong. They were told, don't put the chemicals onto the porous area, and they didn't. And this went for a couple of years before this happened, but the, the game is changing. We've got severe winters, we've got very cold temperatures, and we're putting much more chemicals on than what we used to. So no fault of the installer, no fault of the mix. The design was great. But we have failures. And this is the kind of stuff I got called on just about every day. Here's the Eco Center in Shady Side, sidewalks that were installed. Um, the, the City of Pittsburgh Public Works guys installed this. I worked with them to train them. The great installation. The mix was great, top notch mix. The design is great. The stuff fell apart trying to figure out what in the heck happened here. Well, because it was beside a road, you know, the, the street department guys are doing their job. They've got to put the icy chemicals on the road. You know, that's, that's their job. They didn't do anything wrong. We didn't do anything wrong. But just the overspray coming up and getting onto the sidewalk destroyed the sidewalk. So the parameters have changed. Great design, great installation, great everything, but the parameters have now changed with the severe winters that we're getting. Here's another one. This is the VA hospital in Pittsburgh. I got called on this one. How much, this is the courtyard outside the main entrance of the VA hospital. How much salt do you think, or the icing chemicals, do you think they put on that area? What? They have to. That's their liability. I mean, the, the point that I'm trying to get across is there's liabilities. You know, I get calls from schools and colleges and hospitals. We want to do this. We want to do that. Your liability is, is keeping people from falling. You're going to put those deicic chemicals on. So maybe this isn't the area that you want to use porous concrete in is all I, I can tell people now. I mean, you look at Woodcock Township up above Meadville, they get tons of snow and cold weather, and their stuff looks beautiful because they can maintain it without putting the de-icing chemicals on it. They don't have the issue. But places that they're going to salt that stuff, every time a snowflake hits the ground, there's a guy out there with salt because of the liabilities. The limitations is what we're, we're now starting to learn. <clears throat> 